Welcome back to another episode with your host Mitch presented by Notorious Pulls Radio and for this week's episode we have UFC Fight Night Sean Strickland versus Abus Magomedov and this event is going down at the UFC Apex July 1st. So before we get into it remember if you are new to our show please leave a like follow and subscribe on all social media platforms. Now let's get into it. Sean Strickland versus Abus Magomedov. And I have to say, out of all the main events that the UFCs have been putting together, this has to be one of the softest main events. Obviously, Sean Strickland, the seventh ranked middleweight, coming off a very good win over Nasser Din Imamov, is going against Abus Magomedov, who's literally had one fight in the UFC. Obviously, I don't know why they would be feeding a guy like Magomedov to Sean Strickland, which stylistically and based on the rankings doesn't even make sense to risk such a highly ranked opponent against a person who has barely any fights in the organization is obviously baffled me. I believe that they could have put easily a top 10 top 15 guy against Sean Strickland and made this that much more entertaining but nonetheless I still think this is going to be a very fun fight how does this fight go like every Sean Strickland fight he stands in the pocket and I believe he's going to have to stay away from the cage because Magomedov has a good wrestling background and he's not going to want to sit and trade with Strickland Strickland has a very good jaw he's a very crafty boxer and he has a ton of experience when it comes to fighting in this division. Abuz Magomedov, on the other hand, had one great win against Dustin Stolfus. And I liked his matchup against him. He did excellent. He had a nice TKO victory. But do I believe he earned himself a fight against a top 10 ranked opponent? No. This fight should be an Easy, straightforward win for Sean Strickland and Magomedo is going to be a heavy underdog when it comes to this main event. But nonetheless, I'm still excited. It's a free fight and I'm still going to enjoy it. Our co-main event is a very interesting matchup. So as you know, Demir Ismagulov on January 1st, 2023 actually announced his retirement. He lost this fight to Armand Sarukian which later on he said that he had to retire due to health conditions and some undisclosed circumstances but he had one fight left on his contract and I am very excited that he's exercising that last fight on his contract against a very game opponent and that's Grand Dawson record 19 and 1 he's an American top team standout and he's on a 10 fight win streak which is incredible I love watching Grant Dawson I love what he brings to the table every time he fights and I think this is an amazing matchmaking and I would have been way more happier if they would have gave these two lightweights the main event slot versus what the main event actually is I do believe this is actually a huge matchup and Demir never takes an easy fight all his opponents have been absolute killers Obviously, he fought Armand, he fought Guram, he fought Rafael Alves, he fought Tiago Moises. It seems like he has a thing with fighting guys from American top team. Obviously, that Grand Dawson is one of their top guys, top lightweights in that gym. Obviously, Dawson is not a slouch himself. 10 fight win streak, of course, had a great win against over Mark Madsen, had another beautiful performance against Jared Gordon. This kid has it all from the striking to the grappling. He is a complete martial artist. I do believe this might be a little bit more than Demir can chew. This is a very difficult matchup against Dawson. And I'm going to have to give the slight edge to Grand Dawson. I don't know if Demir has that mental edge, you know, when a fighter announces his retirement due to certain health conditions and then wants to come back around and fight again i'm worried about his mentality if he wants to just one off one more fight to see if he still got it 
or he actually fully recovered and he's willing to actually continue a run for a lightweight title. So we will have to obviously see that Saturday night. And I believe this is fantastic matchmaking by the UFC. I am super excited about this fight. The next match that I want to talk about is against a veteran versus a big upcoming prospect. And that's Max Griffin versus Michael Morales. Obviously, Max Griffin is a big UFC vet, record 19 and 9, has fought a lot of people in the division, coming off a win against another UFC veteran, and that's Tim Means. He obviously had a decision loss to Neil Magny, picked up wins over Carl's Condit, Song Keenan. Max always brings the fight to the center. He is a all gas, no breaks. He's always exciting when he steps foot into the octagon. His opponent is on a little bit of a tear. He is an undefeated welterweight in the division. He's coming off three wins with the promotion. Obviously, he had a beautiful Dana White Contender Series debut. He had a great win over the veteran Trevin Giles, who obviously used to fight in the middleweight. So he's a nice, big welterweight. So that obviously showed a lot to me. And he had a great win against Adam Fujit. So this is actually a very pivotal fight in his career for Morales because a guy like Max Griffin has danced with, if not them all, at least most of them, if you understand what I mean. He's got to see lots of different styles from lanky grapplers to strikers to submission specialists. He has that great base, that great experience and that veteranship that can really provide Morales a lot of challenges. And obviously the UFC wants to give Morales a good chance, really showcase his work, giving them a big, big chance to really rise up and take on such a crafty veteran. So I'm also very looking forward to this fight and we'll see if he'll be able to keep that undefeated streak going. I think personally he will. So we'll have to see and fight out Saturday how that fight plays out. But definitely keep an eye. Do not miss these two. This is going to be a banger. Very possibly fight of the night. You heard it from here first. The next match that I want to introduce is the ladies. The ladies is always fun to watch. And especially when I'm a fan favorite of Ariana Lipsky. Record 15 and 8. The queen of violence is going against Melissa Gatto, record 8, 1, and 2. Obviously, Ariana Lipsky is a very crafty Brazilian fighter, also fighting out of American top team, is coming off a beautiful win against J.J. Aldrich. Her opponent, Melissa, is actually coming off a loss to the very talented Tracy Cortez. But she picked up two amazing wins in her division against Sidra Eubanks and Victoria Leonardo with outstanding fashion. This girl is a very big finisher. How I see these two playing out, as much as I am a Lipsky fan, she's been too inconsistent. She hasn't been able to put a string of wins in a long time. So she's been winning, losing a fight, winning, losing a fight. Like I said, a lot of inconsistency in her game. Somehow, always someone finds her weaknesses and is able to expose them. I believe that Melissa is that person and she has that skill set because even when she fought Cortez, Cortez had to take her all the way to decision. She's a really game flyweight and I'm really excited to see her to her best performance to date against Ariana Lipsky. So that's who I'll be rooting for Saturday night. And for the main last fight that I want to go over is we have the return of Kevin Lee back into the UFC. And the UFC obviously gives Kevin Lee no breaks. He's going against the very dangerous Renat Fakharedinov. It's even hard for me to say his name, but it doesn't matter. If you watch his fights, just remember the name Renat. He is an absolute savage in the octagon. This man is an unbelievable wrestler, 
unbelievable grappler and has an insane gas tank. Three rounds, five rounds, I don't think it matters. This guy has no quit in him. He literally breaks down every single fighter he gets into the octagon. Obviously, Kevin Lee has always been a fan favorite. He's a very game opponent. But I do believe him fighting in the welterweight division is really not his space. It's a shame that the UFC doesn't have a division in between welterweight and lightweight. And that 15-pound difference is huge. It's like when you move from the lightweight to the welterweight and you are more of a natural lightweight, you become very, very small for that division. Because guys like Kamara Usman, Hazmat Chimaev, Colby Covington, Gilbert Dorino, Bilal Muhammad, these are real size welterweights. And these guys, when you really step into that top five, top 10, it really makes a difference between fighting in their that weight class or a lightweight class. And I believe Renat is a tremendous welterweight with tremendous power, and he is going to ragdoll Kevin Lee. Kevin Lee's last win was against Diego Sanchez, who is way, way, way past his prime and has not even close, not even the same caliber. Kevin Lee's a very young, at only 30 years old, and fighting a guy like Diego Sanchez and coming off two losses, obviously, to Daniel Rodriguez and Charles Oliveira, I believe he is going into the meat grinder with Renat. I think the UFC matchmakers are just going to eat Kevin Lee alive one last time and send him packing out of this promotion. I think this is his final chance, and I think this is a little bit too much for him to chew off. I think Renat is an absolute beast. I see him three rounds just dragging Kevin Lee's body all over the octagon and ground and pounding him to his finish. Guys, remember, if you enjoy our episodes, some of the best way to support us is we have some of the best merchandise at NotoriousPulls.com. That is one of the best way to support us to keep our show going and active. And remember, if it ain't notorious, I don't want it. Your host, Mitch, with Notorious Pulls Radio, and we'll see you soon.